FS1 College Hoops tip-off is sponsored by Ford. Going further so you can. A non-conference swing rolls on from Ann Arbor, Michigan. The Big West against the Big Ten. UC Riverside looking to get above 500, taking on the Michigan Wolverines. Thanks for joining us for a little Sunday afternoon basketball. He's the former UConn Husky, Donnie Marshall. I'm Lisa Byington, and UC Riverside already has one upset here, my friend. They're looking for another one here today. Yeah, they make the long trek from the West Coast. Signature win to start the season at Cal. Looking for another one here today in Ann Arbor for Michigan. It's nice to go to Hawaii, but it's nice to come home, especially when you get a chance to at least practice one time. Come back with a 5-1 record. I think Beeline likes the way they're playing here today. Hawaii and home for these Wolverines, all within about four or five days. But you're right, John Beeline and Michigan is back here in Ann Arbor. Let's take a look at the starting lineups here. We will start with Michigan. The biggest question is their point guard situation. Eli Brooks will get his third straight start. The other guys you see there, Matthews, Abdur, Rahman, and Robinson and Wagner, they all average in double figures. For UC Riverside, their starting lineup, they have had four consistent starters all year long, and Chance Murray will get back-to-back -back starts. Take a look at Dikembe Martin, though. He is a youngster, but he is the face, a local face for this program, a Highlanders program that comes into today with a two and two overall record. As you mentioned, Donnie, Michigan coming in at five and one. A little bit different building today. Remember, students are still away on break, but the fans, they still love Michigan basketball. To get over that hangover from <laughs> that football game yesterday, right? College basketball, it's not just for kids, not anymore. <laughs> Always a good atmosphere here at the Chrysler Center. We have a late shot clock situation already for Michigan. They work it around to Wagner, who will take the triple try, and he'll drill it. There was three seconds left on the shot clock. Yeah, good news, bad news for the Highlanders. They did a great job, but you just have to be able to close out on the big guy. Now, if he misses, you have numbers to rebound, but they're going to have to figure out how to close out on those long-range shooters for Michigan. Alex Larson, they have a three-headed monster that they use with their bigs inside, and Larson turns it over, and that has been a problem for UC Riverside all season long. They average almost 18 turnovers per game. Plus, you can't come on the road and throw the ball away, especially not the first, the tone-setting play of the game, which is the first one. They'll go Wagner's way again. Soft touch, that time it's a two. He's got all five for Michigan. Man, he looks terrific this season. You walked in the building today, Lisa, and he, he looked like a player. I mean, he looks Looks like he's eaten well over the summer. Added some pounds, some good pounds, not the ones that we put on over Thanksgiving. He's still only 245. And you can tell the shooters, though. Wagner was one of the first players out from Michigan. So was Duncan Robinson getting the reps in early. Seven seconds now on the shot clock. Reverse oh. style falls for Alex Larson. It's a terrific move, too. You don't see that, that secondary move, I call it. In college, guys will make one move over the left shoulder that get you in the air, jump into you. I mean, that was a get the guy up and then use the basket for the reverse layup. Terrific move. And up against a possible pro eventually. Here's Wagner again. This has been Mo Wagner's day. A quick seven for Mo Wagner. Well, if it ain't broke, the size is probably could be an issue for the Highlanders, and Wagner is, is feeling it outside, inside. Terrific start. I was going to say, not only is he 6'10", but it's a versatile 6'10". Lots of options here with Wagner. Again, six seconds to shoot. The fadeaway falls. That was nothing but net for DJ Sylvester. Very important here, too, for the Highlanders, just their energy level, you know, not to hang their head. They did a good job. Turn it over, you come back down, get a couple of real good offensive sets. Huge when you're playing a team like this in this building so far away from home. It's Sylvester, who's making back-to-back -back starts, the first start of the season after missing the opener at Cal. He had been coming off the bench really the last few games. Matthews is off the mark. That was Charles Matthews' first look. The leading scorer here from Michigan, of course, the transfer out of Kentucky. offense here for the Highlanders. And look for Brandon Rosser. He was held under double figure scoring for the first time in the last game. Wagner in and out, but he's got that soft touch. 
it seems like Michigan has said, and Coach Beeline has told his team, listen, this is where we're going to early. Let's see how that works. It's working out great for Wagner. Even that shot, it was in and out. They come down, they get a stop. On the transition, it's Matthews for his first two. And that, that just can't happen. You know, you, you got to pick up a guy. Even if it's not yours, you have to communicate. You know, it's not loud in here yet, but I know you're still trying to get your feet underneath you. If you're the Highlanders, point a guy, say, I got yours, you get mine. No layups. Matthews after the transfer, after sitting out last year, and he'll have three good years here to play in Michigan if he wants to. Martin with the hesitation, got a piece. That was Brooks who went up to get it. And Brooks with the kick out to Duncan Robinson. That's his spot. Well, if you know anything about Duncan Robinson on this Michigan Wolverines team, he likes the corner shots, especially the right, I call it that right corner pocket. You got to close out on him and make him a driver. Air ball from Murray. And Robinson already top 10 all time in terms of three point makes in Michigan history. Up from up top, it's what Wagner. We already hit the first one. A 12 4 Michigan advantage. Kick out left alone till Sylvester. And that was really one of the things that, you know, when you talk about the Highlanders, they haven't been great at this season finding guys, drive. Draw guy and kick. Textbook offense right there. He's got five of the seven from UC Riverside. He averages about five. He's at that right now. A triple try at time for the freshman, Eli Brooks, and the threes are falling for Michigan. Yeah, it's nice that Brooks can get in the game, find guys, and then it's reciprocated. He can knock down a shot. Just like bigs want to be rewarded when they grab a, a tough rebound on the other end. The point guards want to get the ball back, too. They're out there distributing to you. Michigan 3 of 4 shooting from distance here to start. Won't fall again for Sylvester. On the transition, Brooks. Dennis Cuts. The Highlanders have seen enough. This one may be getting away from UC Riverside early. Hey, what, Charles Matthews, that's the last guy you want to get going, and he was on the the end of that one, too, with the assist. Michigan in control. 10-3 run to start. Early run in this game has stretched the lead out to 10 for the Michigan Wolverines. Donnie Marshall, he knew pace would be big for John Beeline. Yeah, just speed things up. I know you've been on the road. You guys are tired, but they're young kids. You know what? You're at home. Try to get the crowd that you do have in the building behind you. you got to make this pace fast to get deep into the Highlanders bench. And on the other side, Riverside, you see Riverside needs to move the basketball. You got to shift the defense from side to side. One-on-one -on -one basketball, not going to get it done against the Wolverines. Yeah, assist total, very, very big, but only one assist here so far for UC Riverside. That was something that Dennis Cotts wanted to see trend upward here today. Out of the timeout, Sylvester can't get it to fall. And that play's not going to work. You've got a, a really good defensive team in Michigan with size. This ball moved like two or three times. John Teske has checked in for the first time for Michigan. He takes Wagner's spot. Oh, Wagner, really good start. Seven points, only missed a couple of shots in the first six minutes. A lot of perimeter movement in these possessions here for UC Riverside. Missing absolutely everything from the corner. One for the last eight for the Highlanders, and Matthews will get a chance at the free throw line. Just so strong, but the defense was terrific again by Michigan. They they leave a big guy, the center for the Highlanders out in the corner. They said, we'll live with that. He shoots an air ball, and that starts their transition offense down the other end. Matthews is just so strong. His length, he's got a 6'7", six, 6'8", six, wingspan, so even if... You get into his body, he's going to extend over your chance to knock down a couple here. Matthews, what a great addition he has been for Michigan this year. Had to sit out after transferring from Kentucky. He comes off that Maui invitational, averaging about 20 points per game, eight rebounds, had a career high against LSU. We saw he could do a lot of different things. Yeah, he's scored 20 points in half of their games they've had, so you know he can score at a high, in a high volume and a high rate. 
But I think it's the other things that make him so special. His length defensively, he understands his... Sometimes it's hard to get players who have been at a great program and come to another very, very good, if not great program, to get them to buy into the small things, and he has done that so far for John Beeline. And he had trouble in that VCU game. He was cramping up. His left quad was giving him all kinds of trouble. Oh. And they ran right into Teske. John Teske, the big fella for Michigan, stands at seven feet one, and he's whistled for his first. And I know it didn't end in a basket, but just that extra pass and the backdoor cut gets you a foul. Now you're going to the foul line. You know, you throw a foul on a big guy who just comes in the game, who's really, he's been a, a, a nice bright spot for John Beeline. Teske has this season so far. Eight points in the last game against VCU, and it's, it's really, in my opinion, it's not the volume. It's when he scored those points. You know, when, when Mo Wagner goes to the bench, what's going to happen? There was really no question when Teske stepped in. So, you know, he's been a, a terrific, terrific, I guess, surprise, if you will, for yeah. the Wolverines Yeah, no, I think season, that's fair. Right? I think that's fair. you, you got to wonder if there was going to be a, a drop-off. And, and the big question, time and time again, in fact, we asked it to John Beeline, even in the pregame, will he use Wagner and Teske at the same time? <laughs> Probably not today, but it is something that he is entertaining. There's the first bucket for Isaiah Livers, the freshman out of Kalamazoo, Michigan. I think it's tough to go big, big when you're playing non-conference because you're playing teams that are much smaller. It's just the nature of your non-conference scheduling. But once the Big Ten starts, I think we will see those two big boys play together side by side. A couple of turnovers now already for UC Riverside. Mentioned that they average about 18 of them per game. They'd like to see the turnovers go down, and Dennis Cuts said we'd like to see the assists go up. <laughs> Largest lead here of the game for Michigan. That is kind of Matthew's sweet spot. Teske with the tip, still battling for it. And the smallest player on the floor comes down with it. I love when the little guys stick their noses in there. <laughs> Javon Brown was looking to go one-on-one. -on -one. Now 15 seconds here to shoot. Matthews trying to create all kinds of trouble. Single digits now on the shot clock. Brown getting double teamed, nowhere to go. Teskina Matthews. Cardinal Sidney, you dribble to the corner when the defense is chasing you down there. You just can't do that. There's a look for Simpson, yeah, especially when 7-1 is coming at you. <laughs> Now, right now, Riverside just needs to slow down a little bit. You know, keep your spacing. You know, with their their unit in right now, a lot of pick and pop. They're not going to throw that ball down low for strong post moves. It's drive, draw, and kick it to guys. Spacing so important. This is a team that has all 12 players back, though four of them didn't play last year. Six here to shoot, a little finger roll finish there for Martin, his first points. All set up by the spacing, though. The defense is running at you, you show the ball, get them up in the air a little bit, put it on the floor, no one helping down low. Dikembe Martin out of Riverside Cali, he's the local face, they're trying to build a program around him on the perimeter. That's been one of the emphasis of the Highlanders, trying to keep the local guys home. Rebound to Javon Brown. Redshirt Jr. on the push. He's going to take it all the way. Xavier Simpson running things here for Michigan. And in the corner, they leave Matthews wide open. So unselfish. It's, it's just a, a thing of beauty to see a team that is strong, they're talented, they're big, but they play together. It's all this stuff. In the beginning, doesn't mean anything if you're not playing together as a team. Extra ball movement, love it. Step back is short for Martin. Matthews with seven. Here's Livers. Isaiah Livers with the flush. Run the floor, big fella. They'll find you. Red the needle, livers, finishing strong. 16 point Michigan advantage, largest lead here of the game, and the Wolverines have done it by kind of sharing the basketball. It's that time of year though, Lisa. 
the, the time for giving. <laughs> <laughs> and that's exactly what Michigan, they're giving the ball up. They're, they're, they're sharing it, spread the wealth. And on the other side, Riverside has one assist. At some point, if you're the coach, then you get to a timeout, you got to say, you know what? Do what they're doing. It seems to be working for them, not so much for us. But I don't know what Cuts is telling these guys right now, just dribbling the air out of the basketball. And that play right there, in my opinion, that's Cruz's goal. Yes, you got it. You went over a smaller player, but that's not going to last the entire game against a team like Michigan. Is it technically the, the time to give and share after Thanksgiving break? Well, you have that little window between Thanksgiving and Christmas. Oh, so, so, so you don't give a lot of gifts for Christmas is what you're saying. Just no, I, that I never. That statement just tells no, me that, that you're a taker. That totally took it way out of line. I'm, just, I, I, I'm very I'm giving. I'm reading between the lines here. <laughs> I just don't want to know when the time of giving starts. Just write so I can start Lisa giving. Is a <laughs> write that in there. <laughs> I'll make sure to give you a Christmas card, Donnie. <laughs> Walk in violation for UC Riverside, who is giving the ball up way too many times here to Michigan. And I don't mind this because look where the shot's coming from. I didn't see a shuffling of the feet on that play, but that's why I'm not wearing stripes. We're in high, but that's a good move. That's you'll take that turnover because you let your big man go to work one on one, six feet from the basket. And Xavier Simpson or Simmons, Jerron Simmons, excuse me, in for Michigan now running things. We will see Simmons and Simpson and Brooks the take away from Michigan off and lays it off to Poole, who got smothered. Robinson is there for the cleanup job. But Jordan Poole ran into a couple of Highlanders. And I know it's early in the season, seven games in for Michigan, but you can tell when a team likes each other, when players enjoy playing together and, and being on the floor together, when they share the ball at times where they can take it themselves. Michigan has done that multiple times already in this game. Give it up. Robinson contested, off and moving. Here's Simmons. Wagner has checked back in for Michigan. Libby Watson in for the first time. In and out for Robinson. Wagner will go to the free throw line. And we will take our under eight timeout. 28 to 12 for Michigan. Transition looks for the Wolverines early and plenty. We've got an early season hoop showdown, a top 25 duo, Baylor taking on Trayvon Blewett, and 15th ranked Xavier, followed by Maine taking on Georgetown. It all starts at 6 Eastern on FS1, or you can stream it live on Fox Sports Go. Georgetown's got the new head coach, Donnie Marshall. Pat Ewing, I love it. You know, it, it's, it's what every, I think, it's, at least the Big East, it's what a lot of conferences want. You know, a lot of them are defined by the character uh, which are their coaches, and that's what the Big East has always been to me. As a player at UConn, the strength of our conference was the personalities of our coaches, and I think the Big East over the last two or three years, you know, with Mull obviously we have some great coaches that aren't the big names, but with Chris Mullen and now, you know, Patrick Ewing, it's, it reminds me of the old Big East. Oh, for sure. You know, you know, when I, I still remember last year in the Big East tournament in St. John's. 1-1. One, one. It was a back and forth. There was some pushing and shoving yeah. in that one, and that's exactly what Mullen said after. It just reminded me of yeah. the old school stuff. Of course, Lavelle Jordan is the other new head coach in the Big East. Was an assistant some time ago for John Beeline. There's Watson who drills him. Maybe Watson, a sophomore out of Ohio. He's in to make shots for Michigan. And that's a tough one. You run in the zone and you think it's going to work and they knock one down from outside. <laughs> Matthews on the take. I mean, he took that step through move at the free throw line. Talk about it, his wingspan, but even for a guy his size, he's got these long legs. So that, that long step, if it's a side step or a euro step, is just so impressive going to the rim. Almost a double figure. He's at nine here for Michigan. You mentioned that half of his games has gotten to the 20 point mark. Put back won't go for Larson. 
and, and that's a situation for Larson where he has to recognize there were four white jerseys around him. And I know, again, I, I said earlier, your four feet, it was one on one. You go over the left shoulder, jump up, great. But just take a look. You got a ton of white uniforms around you. Look, there's one reaching, there's three, and then one reaching in. You got to kick that out to a wide open shooter. Larson was really big in that upset against Cal to start the year. He had a double-double, 15 points, 13 boards, but an awfully quiet night here to start. Michigan again on the push. It's Brooks who's back in. And they work it around to Robinson. Very often you see him miss that poorly. He's not the same shooter from the top as he is from the corners. It's just a different three-point shot. Not that he can't make it, he seems more comfortable from those corners. This time he'll go off the bounce. They're going to call Ooh. a blocking foul. Wow. You thought a charge was yeah. coming. Yeah. <laughs> I thought he got, got outside of there, but it was a great job of recognizing I can st step in and take a charge. And Duncan Robinson is, you know, known for his, his outside presence knocking down threes, but over the summer did a lot of work on putting the ball on the floor. And you have to know as a shooter, it, once you start making one or two shots, it's so easy to get to the rim. A little shot fake, head fake, whatever it might be. I played with some of the best shooters to ever play the game, and they say once I make one or two, now I can have ten layups if I want because I've made some from the outside. Duncan Robinson's in that same category. Make a shot from the outside, and he opens everything up for you going to the basket. Well, he's one for three from three. He's got six points. Michigan out to its largest lead here at plus 22. Again, they're feeding the big guy, Larson, inside. He goes up and over Vodna. He just can't get that to fall. Matthews on the rebound. Vogner this time loses it. You can see where he's learning the perimeter game. I mean, Larson did a good job of, of giving him two or three feet, testing him. Now, Larson does a, he's, he's in front of you still, so that's a big guy just learning to shot fake. You gotta let that guy get up in the air and then put the ball down on the floor. I don't think the, the fake was good enough there. The big six points Wagner had in that PCU game, right? Yeah. The old fashioned three point play and then hitting a really important three point. Matthews back to Abdir Rockman. And he's in for two. His first two, Muhammad Ali, Abdul Rahman. Taking about five minutes to go in the half. Part of a 10-0 Michigan run. And it's such a, it's, it's like a John Beeline team. You just forget, oh, by the way, we forgot about Rahman here. Duncan Robinson, I mean, they just keep coming at you. Can't get it to go there, but the hands in the passing lanes are active defensively. Nine turnovers, make it 10. Another transition look, Matthews is gonna keep it high off the glass for another two, and he's in double figures once again. Love deflections, I think it should be an official stat. I've talked to a lot of coaches already this young season, and they agree, they say, we, they chart it. Some coaches want 32 a game, some want 25, wherever that number is, they know how important it is to get deflections. Sean Beeline has said time and time again, one of the things that might be undervalued right now is Charles Matthews' defensive ability. There's the third turnover for Michigan, but the Wolverines dominating here from the jump. I just located east of LA, about 90 minutes north of San Diego, making the trip to Ann Arbor. And when you take the trip to Ann Arbor on Ohio State, Michigan weekend. You, you won the lottery. Take, you gotta take it in, Donnie Marshall, <laughs> which they did. The whole team getting to watch this one from Michigan Stadium. I know there are some fans out there saying, how did these guys get tickets? I've been waiting for tickets <laughs> to this game. And think about That's a really good point. Get one or two, but the entire team? Hey, Dennis Cutts has some connections. Right. <laughs> fifth season as the head coach. He's really been a part of this program for 11 years. They've been a D1 program for the last 18. Looking to build and build. Their only winning season was back in 07-08 when they went 17 and 13. 
And a kick out to Dykstra. And I know Dykstra, part of that three-headed monster on the inside I was talking about. You say, you talk about the only, you know, 17 wins, but Coach Cuts has two 14-win seasons. So he's trending in the right direction. And you would think, as you mentioned earlier, that they have 12 players back that they could get kind of this thing going. And they're not playing like a team right now. And, and obviously, the environment sometimes predicts, you know, how fast or how slow you play, how, how well you play. But, you know, you want a team that's been together to play together better because they've been together so long. You know, a lot of teams don't get to stay together this long. Guys transferring in and out. You got junior college transfers or what have you. But Got to find a way to move this basketball and share the ball for a higher percentage shots if you're the Highlander. Well, UC Riverside had some transfers sit out last year that are now playing this year. They haven't really had many transfers transferring away from the program, and that says something. Robinson, that time from the left side, he hurt you. Three ball corner pocket. He said, Donnie Marshall, I can hit it from the left like I can hit it from the right. That's right. And I think that's a, I mean, it's a closer shot, but I think it's a more difficult shot because you don't have the backboard to gauge, especially if you're shooting in other buildings once you get on the road. But he's got that shot down. That that's, should be the top of my scouting report when it comes to Duncan Robinson. Run him out of those corners. Part of a 15 nothing run. Teske got a piece, even with a couple of fouls. Ball movement so special for the Wolverines. 12 assists already. 16 made field goals. Look at this. One quarter to the next. They just know when my guy drives, creates some space, get away from him. Defense can't recover quick enough. And Austin Davis has checked in for Michigan. Took a red shirt year last year. Deep look, too strong for Poole. Jordan Poole kind of known for his early bench celebrations here early this year. He's getting a lot of good <laughs> playing time in this one so far. Riverside and a heck of a drop right now. Looking for some points, desperate for some points, and they get it from Dominic Pickett. When you come off the bench, You've seen what's happening. You want to give something good. You know, you want to play the right way. That's a terrific move. A little floater on the baseline, but all because the ball swung two or three or four times. Oh. Put back. Oh, I think it's not going to count. Austin Davis a little bit too quick. The ball is still sitting on that cylinder. I'm Duncan Robinson. I'm like, patience, man. Let's see, see what's, let it come off first. You just took two points from me. You know what, Austin Davis plays about three minutes. He's going to try to I get care. his when he gets in. Took my points from me. Play one minute or 21 minutes. Just took two points from me. <laughs> Corner look and a triple try. It's good for Dykstra. That is his first three-point make of the year. And the second of this game for UC Riverside. Under a minute to play here in this first half. Michigan, of course, coming off the Maui Invitational. They went two and one. The last game they played was that fifth place game, a victory against VCU. But John Beeline learning all kinds of lessons. So they shot 53% in that Invitational. They averaged about 82 points per game. But some of the biggest lessons were maybe learning how to close out in the stretch against VCU, because that's something they didn't do against LSU. Yeah, and I, I think a lot of that, when you're not practicing, that's when you have to have those teaching moments and the players have to be receptive to that. Listen, we're not practicing a lot, if at all. We have to learn from video from one game to the next. Too strong for Abdur Rahman. And a rare transition look. Flippin passed it up. That time we'll go for two. A few seconds here of the half. Michigan has led from start to finish. Largest lead here of the half is 29. And John Beeline will call a timeout with 16 seconds to go here in the half.
Johnny Marshall, Lisa Byington with you. 16.3 seconds to go in the half. John Beeline calls a timeout, yeah. and you like it. Why? You remember this as a player. You can't get live action. 16 seconds to go. Who cares what the score is? Let's see how we can run this last play of the half, because who knows once conference play starts when we're going to be tied or down one with 16 seconds to go. So where do they go? I love the timeout. What do you got? Where do they go? Drive, draw, kick. They collapse. Or you hope they foul you in. <laughs> Flippin was going for the steal. He got a little bit too much arm. And now with 9.7, it's spread it. If you can beat your guy off the dribble, you go. Otherwise, they collapse. Find an open man. Five team fouls for Riverside. Michigan not in the bonus yet. Into the corner for Poole, who will let it fly. There was your drive and kick. Yeah. Just like I drew it up. 41 to 17, an impressive first half for the Michigan Wolverines, fresh off of their Hawaii trip. After the short break, we'll send you out to Mike Hill, Bill Raftery, Steve Lavin, Jim Jackson in LA. John Beeline knew this would be a tight turnaround for his Michigan Wolverines coming off the Maui Invitational, but so far so, so good after the first half. These Wolverines, a lot of them arrived late Friday night when they knew they weren't going to be playing in the championship game. They could get 10 early tickets back. So the top nine players in the rotation flew back with their athletic trainer to get back even before the coaches did from Maui to make sure that they could kind of acclimate themselves back to the Midwest a little bit. I'd love to stay. If I have my golf clubs, I'd love to say, listen, I'll stay back. You guys go. <laughs> go ahead. We'll catch up. If I have tired legs on Sundays, Whatever. it's all good. We'll, we'll, we'll catch up later. What's your handicap? Personal question. I mean, it, it's very personal. Meetings. We only worked together twice. <laughs> very already, personal we've question. We've already reached that point in the second half. Somewhere around a two. Let's just say oh it's somewhere around Why are you hiding two. that? You can't really make much money as a two. The guys I play with, it's a lot of sandbaggers, but I digress. Well, mine would be somewhere around 22, <laughs> so feel good about it. We'd, so. We'd be a good team. <laughs> Eli Brooks, same starters here for Michigan to begin the second half, as well as for UC Riverside. And again, it's Wagner drawing the foul. Rosser went down to the floor. Wagner took the brunt of that. There, he was limping off a little bit as he goes to the foul line, but love to see your big man trailing the play. You know, Riverside, they were they were perplexing to me in, in the first half. and. and they almost remind me, now stay with me, they remind me of the way people drive in New England. When it snows and it's 20 degrees, they go 75 miles an hour. When it's raining, they drive 35 on the highway. Riverside, when they had numbers, they pulled the ball out. You know, you gotta, you gotta attack. When they didn't have numbers, they went one-on-one. -on -one. You gotta flip that. You, know, you gotta be more cautious when you have Michigan's defense set up. That's, be, that's because it snows like seven months out of the year and it rains only three months out of the year. They're driving 70 in the snow. <laughs> Makes no sense to me. And I'm a kid from Seattle, so you know we know how to drive in the rain. But come on, people, get it together. Well, that's the fourth on Rosser. So Dennis Cutts gonna take out Brandon Rosser, the red shirt senior. And that's what we talked about when you asked me earlier about keys. Michigan, you speed it up now. You cause some foul issues for Coach Cuts and Riverside, and now he has to dig a little bit deeper into his bench. And also as a player got in foul trouble in the last game against Western New Mexico. It was the second win of the year for the Highlanders. Wagner again left wide open. The triple try from up top. And Mo Wagner is in double figures. Michigan 6 of 16 from back there. 
Nice. Spin move for Larson. Alex Larson. Alex Larson doesn't shy away. He hasn't had much success, but at least he's not shying away from Bob. He's not giving up, but his teammates also are getting out of the way, letting him kind of do his thing. Down low to Robinson for two. That's another example of that ball movement we saw in the first half. It's probably a better catch than it was pass. In the touch for Larson and back to back buckets now for Alex, Alex Larson, Larson, who's at six. You know, all you can do when you get down big is, is just keep playing because your coaches are watching you. They're, they're, they're trying to figure out what you're made of. Are you just going to play hard when we have a game or are you going to continue to play the same way when you're down? So this can be a character builder for this Riverside team. How about to John Beeline's kind of evaluating that too when you're up big? How hard are you going to play? Matthews tried the alley oop to Wagner. Three opportunity won't fall, and another rebound for Matthews. Yeah, I, I agree with you, Lisa, it, and I think more so for Michigan, you know, because there are expectations. You're a Big Ten team. You, you, you got that M on your chest. There's a lot of history to this program. So character is everything when it comes to winning and losing at this level for them. They can build some momentum. They have a really tough test around the corner. The Big Ten ACC Challenge, they have the defending national champs waiting for them. And we talked to Beeline before the game, as we mentioned, that you know, they haven't been able to practice. So you're almost, with no disrespect to UC Riverside, you're almost using this game as somewhat of a practice, you know, against really people you haven't seen before to see if things can work and to, to test your guys to see if they're going to play the right way regardless of the score. And I love to how the fact you didn't even bat an eye and you said as a player, I didn't mind just playing with oh, zero practice. Player, are you kidding me? We don't want to practice. We already know the history of practice. AI has, has already put us through that. Players, we just want to play games. The, 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 the practices are for the coaches, for the birds, if you will. But you understand, too, how important these, these early season tournaments are to try to build up your resume, to, to see what you have. And all the, the, the big conferences are doing it, so you have to fall in line and take what it gives you. Brooks up top. Again, he got the start at the point guard spot. That's been one of the questions here from Michigan. They've had a really a three-person rotation at that spot to start this year. John Beeline likes the flow that Eli Brooks provides when he's in. Ogner, that's wow. touched every single part of the rim and fell in. Man. In golf, we call that a, a member bounce. <laughs> 16 for Wagner, his third three-point mate. <laughs> Lefty hook. left wide open. Banks it. You know it's your day when that stuff goes in. Well, he had enough height on it, that's for sure. And 10 assists now for Matthews. He's got a double-double. There's a floater nicely done by Brown. And I think Matthews is going to be one of those guys who are Depending on what game, who they're playing, time of year, people are going to say he's a defensive stopper. Oh, he can score the ball from outside. He can put it on the floor. Let's just say he's just a terrific player all around. Ten assists. He's unselfish. Here's his 11th. And that is just, that just tells you he's a guy who is a smart basketball player. He doesn't just rely on his athletic ability. Dennis Cuts calls the T.O. Everything is falling for Michigan, and I mean everything. Mo Wagner, guten Tag.
move. Wagner leading all scores with 16 here today. It's interesting when you look through the media guide, it says forward. <laughs> Even though he's the biggest guy on the floor at 6'11, 245, put on some good weight. Definitely worked on his footwork, his touch from outside. Mo Wagner is a special player and just knows the spacing, knows where to be on the floor with no matter who he's playing with. What was that German you threw out there? Guten Tag. What's that mean? Oh, good day. Usually it's <laughs> Guten Tag, my Liebchen, which means my love, but it left out the love part. For today, it means good day. That's right. <laughs> for, for so you go purposes. take that. That's right. Matthews, who's working Ooh. on that double double. Bucket, body, and one. And when we return, Matthews will get a chance to finish the three-point play. Charles Matthews taking it to the bucket. 60 to 25, and Donnie Marshall, who's still here, would. You walked in with that. I'm so saw lucky you. to have that. Don't much deny hair. that you didn't walk Half in with that. Half of that hair I would take. And that color at this point. It's in your color wheel. Charles Matthews at the free throw line. We were talking about what kind of addition he has been for Michigan. You see he's got a double-double already, 15 points, 11 assists. This is where he struggled, though, at, at, at the free throw line. Only shooting 55% coming into today. That's just work to me. That's just time. And I have always said with free throws, the more you make, the more you make, meaning mentally you feel much better if you can make a couple and that gets you going, but it takes time. I mean, you have to put the time in, and that's not something you need to have a practice for. You can do that before games, shoot arounds, whatever it might be, to put the extra time in at the foul line. Matthews from the wing. Now, remember, he was a transfer from Kentucky, which means he had to sit out, which means this is really the first year that he's played meaningful minutes, really, since high school. So though everyone was kind of excited about what kind of elevation he could take maybe this program, if he played the way he's capable of playing, there was still that uncertainty if he could reach that level. Those are one of those situations where you bet on yourself. You know, you see that a lot in the NBA, but it's easier because you're getting millions of dollars betting on yourself. But when you go from a program like that to here, people, and we were having this conversation before the game, do you hang around and just because you are associated with Kentucky, you're going to get drafted maybe in the second round, or do you go and bet on yourself and become the man on a team. And now the ex all, all the focus is on you. Yes, more exposure for you to maybe be the leader of the team. But I love the fact that he's left and said, I don't want to just be one of those guys that maybe gets lucky. I want to earn it myself. And he's earning it so far this season. And he's got all kinds of moves there in the mid-range game, too, as we saw that. He can hit all kinds of different shots. Looking to build up his percentage Give with three-point way. Oh, Teske got blocked. Coming from around, it was Jackson back the other way. Abdur Rockman, a sudden block party here at the Chrysler Center. And this, you just have to finish strong. You shouldn't be laying that ball up when you're the biggest guy on the floor. Dunk that basketball, it's a great pass. I don't care if a guy's coming or not, you gotta finish that strong. Cross-court pass, reverse almost fell. What a shot that would have been for Livers. That's another situation where I say you take off and you take a body with you to the rim. Do not avoid the contact. Get fouled. And now Isaiah Livers whistled for the foul. Pretty good D. You know, you get that arm up. If it's not back and it's leaning forward, it's an easy call for the rest. 62 to 29 for the home team. Under 12 to play, Michigan up 62 to 29 for UC Riverside. Fans happy here in this building, but take me into that huddle with the, the Highlanders and, and Dennis Cuts. And, when you're a team and you know you were up against it, yep. Dennis Cuts was honest with us about that. 
But what are the what are the small steps that you're trying to make here in the final 12 minutes when you know you're outmatched a little bit today? You're, you're telling your team that it's basically two six minutes game. The first six minutes, we want no more than two turnovers. Uh, we, we want to get to the foul line six times. You have to play like, and you've heard this, the game within the game. Don't worry about that score should be the focus of his team. Who cares what the score is? Let's try to play a 12-minute game here on out and see how we do from there. Our, our assistants are charting it, and we'll let you know how you did. Play the right way. Just compete. And we, he told us that before the game. I want him to play together, play hard. Oh, flying from the baseline. It's the freshman Isaiah Livers throwing it down. That baseline can be so deadly when you throw the ball to the high post. Everyone's looking away from the baseline. You talk about growing and learning. The town beeline has said that Livers is a player who's constantly doing that. Livers again, that was a no look. Strike from Simpson. Xavier Simpson, who started the first four games at the point guard spot for Michigan. Are you comfortable with where we'll, the Wolverines are at with that spot right now? I think it's really early, and I don't think anyone has taken themselves out of it. It's, I would always say to each player, make it hard for the coach to not play you, and I think they've done that. Simpson, more oh. the defender of the three. We've got to go back and look at Livers taking a baseline. Well, it, it's all set up because the ball goes to the high post. Everyone's looking that way. You forget someone's on the baseline. Livers does a great job of not just standing still, but cutting to the basket. That's trusting that your teammate will find you. Six points today. He had eight points in 11 minutes against Chaminade. Didn't miss a shot. Two for two for three. And another board to Livers. Beeline knew he had to get a game in in the quick turnaround, coming back from the Maui Invitational. They wanted to get in another D1 non-conference game. We got a three-second violation for Michigan. Because everything is pushed up. Mm -hmm. Every Big Ten team, they're playing a couple of conference games now in December. They don't have any buys. Of course, they're pushing it up because the Big Ten tournament is pushed up a week to play at Madison Square Garden. They had to get their non-conference games in. As much as he would have liked to give his guys a day off today to watch a little NFL. The take for two is Javon Brown. Javon Brown. That's a, a really good take. Michigan, I mean, they're in, and I know you have been in these spots where your teams, you're up big. You're just trying to figure out how to play the right way. I, I got to be honest with you. In these games, Lisa, I was trying to get my points. <laughs> you got to remember. I love the honesty. I had teammates named Kevin Ali, Ray <laughs> Allen. So I knew once the season started, I wasn't going to get many touches. Danielle Marshall, I, I had to get, get it up. I mean, get shots up, get to the foul line, pad those stats. You're playing with all kinds of combinations, too. We got some guys now who are going to get some minutes who don't normally get some minutes. We got three Michigan players checking in. It's like a hockey substitution here for the Wolverines. And, you know, you talk about the guys who are fighting for three guys fighting for one position or two for another one. It now puts focus on them to play the right way. You go in there selfishly, that takes you right out of the equation in the coach's eyes. And it's so easy to look up and say, wow, I can shoot whatever shot I want. It won't have, it won't be reflected in the score at all. We're still gonna win. You can't play that way. I mean, it's it's a they say it's a marathon, not a sprint. Well, Michigan, one of the question marks, how good they could be in the Big Ten. Of course, they closed the last season in style. A very dramatic story in terms of winning the Big Ten tournament. Wolverines working it around the pool. He's making the most of a little playing time. Jordan Poole's first points here today. But from Brooks again, just doing a terrific job all game long. You know, making the right plays. If he's not making the extra pass, he's trying to find a guy for a couple of assists, finishing. 
you want from your point guard. Well, of course, Michigan graduated Derek Walton Jr. He's now spending some time in the NBA with the Heat. Here's Wagner from up top, stroking it. You talk about matchup problems, and you know as well as I do, other Big Ten teams are looking at every game whether live or taped to see now what they have to do. Bigs are going to have to pay attention to Wagner in transition this season. Eight nothing run for Michigan. 10 seconds to shoot, using his body nicely. Chance Murray in for two. Using that offhand, it's gonna be a huge part of UC Riverside's success this season. Coach Cuts was telling us that before the game, he expects a lot out of Murray. They go Poole's way again. Fade away this time. My favorite thing about Poole, well, two things. His hair, tremendous, I'm jealous. <laughs> but the short shorts. How about you you that? gotta have really confidence in yourself to wear them high like that. Because everyone's wearing these long ones. They're too baggy down to their knees. And it's not like he's a veteran guy. It's not like he's been here for He's a freshman, by the way, who's doing that. And the kick out, that was a freshman to freshman look. Wearing them freshman size shorts, too. They are young, as we say. <laughs> Short and pull. Pull those things out. <laughs> What a way for Michigan to end last year. March 8th, their plane slid off the runway at Willow Run Airport. They were on their way to D.C. to play in the Big Ten Tournament. What'd they do? Well, they just won it all. They came the lowest seed to win it. They even had to wear their practice jerseys, by the way, in that first game in the Big Ten Tournament. March 12th, they beat Wisconsin to win the championship. And then you see there the Sweet 16 before they lost to Oregon. And they easily, a couple shots here and there, they could have been off to the Elite Eight. Brand Jordan is so progressive. That's what Michigan wears. I'm surprised they didn't design game uniforms that look like practice uniforms. They had such a great stretch in those practice <laughs> uniforms. Make some game uniforms that look like practice uniforms. Or just keep wearing the practice uniforms. Or just keep wearing those. They were balling in those uniforms. Mo Wagner out of the game. We have John Teske back in. Wagner, by the way, in the second half, hasn't missed a shot. 13 points. He's got a double-double right now, 21 and 10. But 13 of his 21 coming in the second half. It's efficient. 21, 21 points in 22 minutes. Yeah. You got to wonder if we're going to see him for the final six minutes. Well, you were trying to... You were trying to see two bigs in the game for Michigan at the same time. I was. <laughs> I was really trying to push John B. Barely, that way. Barely getting one. But it, he wasn't having it. But it's, it's, a, it's a great chance for Teske to kind of really top what he did against VCU. Talked about it. Terrific game. Stepped up when he needed to. Now here's a chance. Now it's obviously it's a different situation. You're up big, but still show your coaches they can have, they can rely on you and have some confidence in you out on the floor for extended periods of time. It's the bump and the bucket. Pool with an and one opportunity. This is just size, getting your guy up in the air, a little shimmy. Anytime you get hit, throw that ball up high, give it a chance to go in. It's the second on flipping, too strong. Michigan will get a second crack at it. had the hot hand for Michigan. How about a third opportunity on this possession? Floater rattles around and home for Watson. Good job by Watson not to fade back. Sometimes you see that ball go up and you've been making a lot. You fade back to half court. No chance to get the offensive rebound. Got himself going forward. Watson coming from a really good AAU program in Ohio. Played with Nick Ward. Michigan State, Caleb Wesson of Ohio State. 
Shooting that Pickerington, Ohio, his hometown. Karis Levert, Brooklyn Nett is from yes, there. Yes, and he's Same wearing place. he's wearing Levert's number 23. <laughs> That's great. Talked about the point guard situation here from Michigan. We talk about the other question. Woo! Cool, Jordan. heating up. I love it. They did it in the post. You get to the rim. The extra medium shorts aren't keeping him from knocking down those long range threes. You were talking about getting your shots and getting your points. <laughs> there it is. But they're getting them the right way. You know, there's no individual <laughs> basketball. They're sharing the ball. You know, I was gonna. I was just about to ask you who's that third consistent score here yeah. from Michigan. They work it around another transition. Look, Watson that time. And I think that's gonna be game to game at times too. He says. Oh, Paul! Reaching the summit. <laughs> Power back from the other end. He is put. Show him everything, young fella. Wow. Woo. Well, the pool is open, kids. Black party knocking down threes. Young fella showing him everything. Jordan Poole's been putting on a show, but as a starter, Charles Matthews has been consistent here throughout. It really is a terrific story because you sit out a year. You know there's been a lot of questions about should he have left Kentucky. He says, nope, I made the right decision, and this is the payoff right here. It's early in the season, I know, but he's, he's really shown no signs of any weakness. We talked about this free throw shooting. I think that can be fixed, especially a guy who's as passionate and as talented as he is. So I don't worry about the foul shooting right now. Well, once Big Ten play starts and you continue to miss, then okay, we have to address it. But there's nothing that shows me that Matthews has any issue with the new uniform he's wearing, and his teammates obviously love playing alongside of him. Yeah, why wouldn't you? 65. His shooting numbers, though, are, are pretty good outside yes. of, his, of his free throw shooting ability. 65% from two land, which we have seen his mid-range game. Mm. Very, very good. Meanwhile, Michigan has checked out every single starter and basically every single backup. And we are in walk-on territory here, my friend. And I wouldn't be surprised if the starters are still just as enthusiastic <laughs> about this game to support their walk-ons and their teammates. And there they go, they're up off the bench, even on a miss. I mean, this is what it's all about. You know the sacrifices that your walk-ons give you every day is sometimes they're professional clappers in practice. All they do is stand on the sideline, clap their hands, they rebound for you. So as a, a teammate, you love to see them get a chance to play. And out of that performance that we saw going into the break, Jordan Poole made 11 points in the last five minutes before that timeout. He was something. here from Michigan, how good can they be in the Big Ten? Michigan State is a favorite. Minnesota has a really good starting five. You don't yet know really what to make of Purdue. They dropped a couple this past week. There's a look. Brett Hibbets. Walk on time. <laughs> Gives a wink to the bench. That's the play of the game right there. Hibbets wink over to the bench. <laughs> like, you know who I am. You know what I can do. This is what college basketball is, is all about. Look at that. Teammates are loving it. Hibbets came in as a preferred <laughs> walk-on in May of 2015. Talk about getting your points. The time to do it. 
Oh, if you're a walk-on and you're getting a chance, to play, there is no extra passing happening at all because you can make the most perfect pass every single time. You're still not going to get much time to play. You're still going to be coming off the bench if it's a blowout, and that's it. So get get them up. Hey, I'm telling with you. you. Get them up. I'm with if you're you. a walk-on, get them up. 50-point spread. You only got 149 get that left. Extra, get that extra pass and stuff. Block from behind. It's Hibbets. Davis got a piece. Oh. Davis got a second piece. What a, what a luxury to be able to stand on the floor and block a shot without even jumping. Two in a row. Look out. Wilson lost it. Luke Wilson having a tough time. Highlanders fumbles number 24. The foul on, on Flippin. We mentioned Michigan's got to fine tune some things. They got a big challenge Jesus. coming up in that Big Ten ACC challenge against North Carolina. That'll be in Chapel Ooh. Hill. And then they open up with those two conference games Indiana and Ohio State. Yeah, you talk about character building. Just look at that <laughs> schedule the next four or five games. Just looking at that schedule, if you're a Michigan player, should put hair on your chest. <laughs> and you know you got to be tough these next few games or so. And, and, you know, every coach will say one game at a time. We'll take it one half at a time. But as a player, you're looking ahead. You're thinking, wow, I, I better get some sleep. <laughs> I better eat right. I better get some extra shots up when I can because that part of the schedule is only for the strong-minded. Luke Wilson couldn't get it to fall. He grew up a lifelong Michigan fan. Known for his bench celebrations. He's a preferred walk-on. We had, a, actually, we had a couple walk-ons. Only two, I think, when I played, but they weren't preferred. They just were kind of hanging around. <laughs> we were like, all right. The hanging around walk-ons. Yeah, they weren't preferred. They were like, we got nine. Just come over here and stand in the corner. Or ten. Well, final few seconds here of this game. Donnie Marshall, your impressions here of Michigan. We're talking about how good they can be in the Big Ten. I think it's important to not get carried away with what they did today. They were just a better, stronger, bigger team than UC Riverside. So you can't look at this and say, oh, we got it all figured out. This is, this is one of those games I always like to say it, it could be fool's gold if you take too much from it. I do like the way they move the basketball. They have what you need in the Big Ten, multiple weapons that play together. So you, you can take some positives from it, but they're feeling good right now, especially to come off of the road and not having any practice. These are those games that can at times be a trap, and they didn't let they allow that today from the get-go. Well, they have a coach who's been coaching for four <laughs> decades. He's too good to, to let his team. Look at this as a trap game. Coming off of the Maui Invitational, looking ahead to North Carolina. We will know a lot about this Michigan Wolverine team next week and taking on the Tar Heels. John Beeline picking up win 221 at Michigan, and the Wolverines in dominating fashion. 87 to 42 for Donnie Marshall and Lisa Bynes and our entire FS1 crew saying so long from Ann Arbor, Michigan.